Welcome to the Switch Lounge, a Nintendo Switch podcast. I'm your host, Tiny Grimes. I will regularly be joined by a guest, but for this inaugural edition of the podcast, it's just going to be me. I've had a Switch for about nine months now. Uh, I've been really loving it, so I'm going to go ahead and talk some Switch. So to start with, I played several new games this week. One I'm really excited about. Uh, I got an invitation to the probably the last Arena of Valor beta, beta test. I really enjoy MOBAs, but I find them to be too long, personally. Uh, so I'm really excited about Arena of Valor. From what I've played, they average like around the 13-minute mark. I, ha- I did have one insanely long game. It was like 25 minutes. Um, and I'm bad at them. But I really like them. I don't understand what it is about me. The one I played the most is Heroes of the Storm. I really enjoyed it. The problem with Heroes of the Storm is that the meta changes so much that if you are like super casual like I am, it seems like every time I fire up the game, they're like, good news, the whole game's different. Uh, I'm hoping Arena Valor is not like that. Also, with the really short games, I have more opportunities. With longer MOBAs, I have a really hard time being like, okay... Are my, is my wife or kids not going to disturb me for like the next half hour? It can be really hard to get undisturbed half hour chunks. So I'm really excited about Arena Valor. I played about maybe 10, 12 games with it. It's a really good MOBA. I really enjoy it. It's really smooth on the Switch with the joysticks. It works really well. I'm actually good at it, which that kind of says to me the players playing it must not be very good in the beta or I don't know something or or maybe uh, I've been possessed by demons and I'm suddenly decent at it but whatever the case is I think when it comes out first of all it's going to be free I see no reason not to get it even if you're not a huge MOBA fan it might be worth trying this one just because the games are so short it's really fun so I've had a lot of fun with that uh, a second game that I played this week, not as much as Hyperlight Drifter. I have not played it on any other system. I hadn't read anything about it other than it looked awesome. I got it, and it is interesting. Like, it's so weird how there's no, like, voices and talking, and it's like this desolate place. It seems really cool. I'm actually quite excited uh, to play it some more, but it's definitely a game that I haven't gotten that far into. I just wanted to mention that I got it, I've been enjoying it, and it seems really cool. All right, on to the news, and boy was there news. There was a Nintendo Direct today, and there was supposed to be one last week, and then Civ 6 was leaked or announced, and Diablo was leaked slash announced, and... I kind of thought, like, okay, I could probably skip this this Nintendo Direct. And I was thinking I probably wasn't going to watch it. And then there was a kid at my school who was like, you're going to watch the Direct? It's going to be so awesome. I was like, you know what? It'll be fun. I can talk to this this young man tomorrow about the Direct. Whatever. I'll watch it, even if all the secrets have been revealed. Boy, was I wrong. (laughs) It was like, here are a million awesome-looking games. And I've seen a lot of people who thought the Direct was really disappointing. But for me, as someone who really hasn't played a lot of console games in like the last, I don't know, since the PlayStation 2, I'd say, was the last time. Like, I played Final Fantasy VII. That was the last Final Fantasy game I really played heavily. So, I am really excited for like a pile of Final Fantasy games. Civ, Diablo, uh, that Warframe game is free to play. That looks really cool. There's a new Yoshi game. I never played that Super Mario game for the Wii U. The one I might be most excited for is one I don't think anyone cares about. It's the City Skylines game. It's like something happened and SimCity just completely fell off the map due to a couple bad games in a row. And this Skylines game looks really cool. I love the SimCity franchise. But for whatever reason, I was always like, I don't really have time to play a Skylines game. But now I'm thinking like, You know, it's portable, 10 minutes here, 5 minutes there. I kind of want to give it a shot. Um, So that excites me a lot. Basically, it was like 50 cool, exciting games. Mario Tennis is getting a bunch of updates that actually might make it fun. That is really exciting to me because the game is really good. The gameplay is awesome. It just, there isn't a format that's really fun other than finding a good friend of yours who's near your skill level and playing, and that's not that easy to do. 
There's a bunch of new gear and stuff coming to Splatoon. All this is really exciting. I gotta say, though, I'm kind of a weirdo. Those NES controllers, you got me, okay? You got me. I've seen nothing but terrible words about those controllers. I'm not that person. I am so psyched for some NES controllers. I've been playing with NES controllers for the last forever. I still have my original NES. Um, so I'm really excited of NES controllers. That doesn't sound even dumber. I'm excited for my daughter to play with NES controllers. I know they're uncomfortable. I know the square is terrible. But it's going to be so fun. When I play Splatoon, I use the zap gun, right? It's just how who I am. If I see Nintendo, the nostalgia in me overwhelms me, and I just have to buy it. So I'm really excited for those Joy-Cons. I feel like, personally, there was so much new cool stuff in the Direct. I was, like, blown away with excitement. And they go on Reddit, and everyone's like, it's the worst Direct ever. I'm like, I, I don't even know that we live in the same universe. Because I thought the Direct was awesome. And there is tons and tons of cool news and cool stuff coming up. So, lots of good news. Also, online service is upon us. Um, I don't know if that's good news. It's news, right? I'm not sure it's good news. There's obviously, I'm not going to go into depth with it because you can, you can look at any video online you want of people bashing the heck out of the online service. Yes, it is not ideal. But I got to say, it's only 20 bucks a year to be able to play a whole bunch of NES games online with friends. I don't know. And cloud saves for some of your games. <laughs> that part is a real sore spot for me and many others. But I personally, kind of like $20 a year is not that much. Um, especially if that online catalog grows. It already looks pretty cool. I want to play Dr. Mario against my brother. I want to beat... Uh, Mario 3 with my brother online. Like, these things sound fun to me. Throw Kid Icarus on there, and we're really in business. So, I feel like I'm in the minority. Do I think the online thing was done amazingly well? No. Am I up in arms about it? No. I think it's fine. It's only 20 bucks, whatever. Um, there's some. But, the, but what's cool about it is the potential for radically awesome upside is there. Well, let's see what they do, right? Let's see what they do. Okay. The last segment for today's inaugural episode is a review. Every week I'm going to do at least a, a partial review of a game. This week it's going to be Octopath Traveler. And Octopath Traveler is a game that I've played a lot of. And it's a game I've been wanting to do a review video for. And I probably will. Uh, but the bottom line is, I think Octopath Traveler is the best RPG on the system. Which doesn't say much. The only real... Uh, competition is Xenoblade, Tra uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, and, w and when I say best RPG, I mean JRPG, so that's not really the same thing. I mean like the Super Nintendo style, old school Final Fantasy kind of JRPG. I think, I think Octopath Traveler is the best example. Uh, having said that, it is not a perfect game, but what it is a perfect is, it is like a perfect first 10 hours. Like, I have never played a game... Okay, that's probably too much. But I haven't played many games that have drawn me in as well as Octopath Traveler did in the first 10 hours. Just the way that it, you know, spreads the story out. You start with the one guy, and you go through their story, and it's really interesting because you're getting to know the characters. And then you get the other people added to your party, which gives you all these extra possibilities. It feels almost open world because you can go... To whatever character you want in whatever order. And then once you get there, you can warp between cities. It just feels so perfect. And then you start finding these secondary jobs to give you more possibilities and more stuff. And you find all these weapons. And especially if you have the thief, you steal them all. And it's just amazing. But then I feel like, like around the beginning of the third stories, you start to go... Um, this doesn't feel open world anymore. Like, it feels really hand-holy. Like, you need to go to this city, and it's right here on the map. Just go there. Like, you don't have to discover anything. You just go there. And, by the way, you have to walk this very specific path to get there. And, by the way, the stories aren't that well written, right? It's like a, a sitcom that's gone on too long, right? Like, the first couple seasons, you're getting to know these characters. The writing seems cool and fun and different, and you're getting to know them. 
But by season five, the writing's kind of gone off the rails, but you're like, ooh, I'm attached to these characters, so I have to finish, I have to see where they're going. Even if the writing isn't that great, that's how I felt about a lot of chapter three. Alfie, I'm looking at you, man. Um, most of the stories weren't that good. Now, Cyrus, you're awesome. I, I, I would watch a, a YouTube video of Cyrus's story. It was great. But most of them lackluster. Um, and so it's at that point where you start to go, hmm, okay, maybe this game isn't as good as I thought it was, right? It's beautiful. The combat system is actually awesome. It's so good that most RPGs or JRPGs, you get to a point where it's like, hey, 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 oh my god, would this battle just end? And especially the boss battles in Octopath Traveler are done amazingly well. Like, there's still a boss I can't beat, right? I've, I've beaten the game, I've seen the credits, I've beaten all the stories, but there's, spoiler, there's more stuff. And I can't beat it. The bosses are too strong, and I use strategy and skill, and it's not enough. But what's cool about it is these bosses keep making you think all the way to the end, and I really, really appreciate that. I think the combat system is one of the great parts of this game. What I really want to see is everything with this game, the art style, the combat system, attached to a game with a better story. I know that sounds bad. I know Octopath Traveler is like the game with a great story, and you start with Primrose, and you're like, oh my god, it's so interesting. It's it's dark, and but it gets lame. Like, Primrose story does not stay good. It starts off good, and it gets not good. Everything's very tropey. It really feels to me almost like they wrote the first set of stories... They're like halfway through the second one's like we gotta we just have to finish this game guys just throw some junk together and let's just ship it, uh, which really makes me sad because like I said, I feel like this is the best ten hours I've played in a long time in a game, but it doesn't retain that. So when I think of Octopath Traveler, to me it's like a B B plus game, and I can see why it got all those initial amazing reviews because you know reviewers aren't playing the whole game. Playing the first 10 hours and going, dang, this game is awesome. I played 10 hours of Xenoblade Traveler, or Xenoblade Chronicles. I didn't even know what was going on. Um, this game brings you in so smoothly and so well. I love that about Octopath Traveler. And so what's so cool about it is, even if you decide to stop at a point, $60 for like 15 hours of really fun play isn't too bad, right? Like, just stop at the 15-hour mark if you're bored. I put in 60 hours, I think. About 20 of them were really worth it. But, like I said, you, you got to finish the sitcom, right? You're not going to stop halfway through knowing that you love these characters. So, bottom line is, I think it's the best example of a JRPG on the system. I don't think it's perfect. I don't think it redefines JRPGs. I originally, my thought was it perfected them, but I don't think so. I think the first 10 hours is near perfection, and then not so much afterwards. So, that's my review of Octopath Traveler. Good game, very solid game. Really looking forward to this exact game with better writing, better storytelling. Hey, maybe a story that ties together. That would be cool. You can tell they were trying to tie the story together at some point, and then they're like, no, nah, no, nah, this is it's not going to work. I realize we could tie these three together, but how are we putting trust in there? It's just merchant selling stuff. We can't tie that together. And I can guarantee you there was a meeting in a room where they were like, we have to tie this all together. And someone was like, we can't. We just don't have the time. Just cut it. Cut it, ship it. All right. Uh, so that is the first episode of the Switch Lounge. Short and sweet. We will definitely have guests uh, on some future episodes, and this will be a once a week podcast. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe, like, all that stuff. I'll see you next time on Tiny Grimes Games. <laughs>